Welcome to Berlin. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Colin, Laura, Nina, yeah. um, from Outcast and Super Life of Blues. Congratulations with your films. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Okay, well done. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for the benefit of people watching, I'm Obviously, we've had this uh, an interview, so if I do ask you some of the same questions, apologies, but I'm going to start with the younger yeah. first. So, um, yeah. how did you get involved? How did this all happen? Um, well, specifically with like Secret Life of Balloons, it started off um, as a school project uh, for my GCSE examinations. I had to write uh, a piece, um, and I just it just I don't I don't even know how it was even born in a sense. It was just um, yeah, just a school project, and I showed it to my mum. Um, she read it and we were like, why don't we just develop this into a short film? Actually, to be fair, I read it and I burst out crying. Yeah. Five <laughs> times I read it. Could yeah. Believe how wow. emotionally powerful it was. It's a lovely film. I've yeah, seen it it's, it's, it's weird seeing it now, obviously, because it was a couple of years ago, but it's even just, it's because I was, it, it reminds me of being in that frame of mind when I was writing it then. And I, I still write now and it's, it's how it's progressed. It's, you're, kind of very, to you're see. a very visual writer. Yeah, I definitely, yeah, I definitely write in how almost I describe it as um, like a film in my head that I'm trying to portray on the paper. Um, but that's how my sister got involved in the end as mm. well, because we thought like, why don't we make this into a film? And then Lauren um, and I co-directed it with Lauren editing it and producing it. So. Yeah, because she's obviously the really talented one. Isn't yeah. She? <laughs> so, yeah. Sorry. Why isn't she Sorry. here? Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> so are they? Because you're. You're all sort of involved in the art, arts, and I, obviously I know the background to these films and your, some of your background. But is that something you want to get involved in when you finish? Yeah, uni? well, in uni at the moment, I'm doing my main degree is history, but I'm actually doing a film um, module alongside it, and I'm trying to get a group together um, who want to make films, and hopefully the uni will subsidise us and help us out with that. Um, they will subsidise. Yeah. Well, we, they do. They do right. do a lot of. Uh, you know, they'd give out. Um, bursaries or whatever to uh, definitely in the creative side they've got like their own theatre and stuff that they mm. hopefully so I need to I need to have some meetings I think just to arrange something but um yeah no it's definitely somewhere I want to go um just I think it's just been so integral to like growing up that it, yeah, would it must be, be weird, amazing yeah. seriously so you know it's all growing up in a family of, yeah <laughs> uh, that's well, all, actually, that's Nina, all Nina, Nina first helped me uh, that's when you met the actors that we yeah. used in the life of Bloons when I was doing a uh, sort of Public information film, if you want a better word for the for the PSF for the police. Mm. And Nina was sort of uh, art director. She, yes. she basically set her bedroom design. became became the set. <laughs> and I said, Nina, you're, you're, are you all the way? She said, Yeah, yeah. So basically, she removed her bedroom and moved. Yeah, and just brought it all the way to East Belfast all, yeah, and set it up. Set it all up and did all the did a collage on the wall and everything. And then met the makeup artists that actually worked with Secret Life of Blue yeah. as well. So you know, a lot of the sort of crew from that came and helped. It's yeah, family and friends that were yeah. originally. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Must be amazing. I mean, because I know you're pretty young men, so that how that kind of reaction to a film is. Yeah, it is. It's so it's so strange. Even like seeing it being shown now and everything. Um, my friends as well like think it's a bit crazy because obviously I'm tweeting about it and stuff, and they're like, "Oh, so you do this?" Especially since I'm just first year uni, they don't know this part of my life yet, really. So um, yeah, it, it is bizarre, but I, I wouldn't change it. Like it's it's great. Yeah. Well, no, cause every filmmaker said it's like a drug addiction once you get involved yeah. and it's really hard to get that car off. And then we've got people that have, I might have mentioned this in the interview, that I know that have had all kind of previous lives with accountants, mm. lawyers, mm. Um, doctors, in, doctors. Mm. yeah, and this guy yesterday and he was, um, actually was he a physicist or something? I think he might have been, I can't remember, but he, he, he was saying he got into film making yeah. and he would never better go back to his previous life. Because you know, I think once you get, get hooked into it, in fact, was, I interviewed a couple yesterday and she didn't want to have anything to do with filmmaking. I think she wants to get into finance, I think it was actually, I can't, again, I can't remember. But uh, she got involved in it because her partner is a filmmaker and yeah. she said I actually became a producer and now I've done it, I just absolutely love it. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you just can't guess, you just can't let it go, you must be seeing it on the screen, I guess. It's not enough producers. <laughs> yeah. Need more good yeah. Really. Actually, I think what it is is that if you're academically able and if you've got the qualifications like lawyer or doctor or accountant, your creative side is not developed sufficiently. Mm -hmm. And then you get into film and you can use those um, professional so elements mm. that have been useful to you. But then you can go into the creative. And then you're also getting out and you're meeting people and you're actually employing things into a, a complete holistic approach to life. Mm. And it's really something really life therapeutic. About it. Yeah. <coughs> like seeing something from your mind that's a shared concept between so many people yeah. and just working together to get it into the final project, although it's obviously yeah. so many stressful 
elements of it. It's really, it's amazing that we can, from a, a, yeah. like a mind. To, I think also, yeah. as you say, taking it from your mind and to actually create something that other people can watch and appreciate and be moved by, mm -hmm. it's different from other forms of art because it's really um, very immersive. Connected, yeah. It's very immersive. You've got the sound, but you've also got that possibility that it's real. Or mm. people transfer it from being a story into being real in their minds mm -hmm. and that's what's so powerful about film it's a really persuasive dynamic and I suppose more so when you are a non-narrative I know obviously yours is a narrative non-narrative sort of leading on to yours mm -hmm. yeah because actually that really is real well actually yeah. that's they, help, they help quite a bit because I have to really okay I feel not that's the easy bit I think because then you know, I, oh, here's all the footage. Now let's make a story. Mm. You know, because <laughs> we've had. Well, the story was there in the sense that we knew, we knew uh, roughly what we... Carol was doing and yeah. also how she employed things to to get the money in. The difficulty is when you've got six weeks or eight weeks worth of material, finding the bits that tell the story. That's yeah. the problem, and it was incredibly complex and, and really soul destroying. But Neil and Lauren also helped because they, they did some people. archive research for us into the different religious aspects that we were trying to show through the through the story, like mm -hmm. Buddhism, Hinduism and the situation with untouchables. Um, yeah, but also early important. screens where they were watching it and going, you know, we don't quite understand what's this about, you know, what's this about, which is really, really useful for us because we yeah. tend to, you, you get, you know, you can't see the wood from the trees. You, you, you get mm -hmm. so immersed in it, and me, I go, oh, can we not have this bit in because I spent, you know, took ages <laughs> trying to shoot that and it looks beautiful, yeah. but it's got nothing to do with the story. Yeah, yeah it doesn't mm, take yeah. the story so forward. Not a yeah. great archive footage, potentially. Mm. But then I suppose that's where it's the, the dichotomy of having a, an editor because you know they might cut out stuff they don't want to see, but you want to keep it in there, I suppose that's always It's a difficult point. one because actually being so close with Colin and me being married, um, I can overrule what he wants perhaps but no every woman can overrule every bloke this yeah. is a rule of life right? <laughs> but that, <laughs> and that's tricky that's tricky because overruling isn't always the right thing no. sometimes it's stopping going what is it you're actually trying to show what is it you're thinking and then i brought it back in and yeah. it works so it actually has been such a partnership in trying to edit it Just and moulding it, it forward. Till it, yeah, it's and that's interesting the way you, because I know that you've been editing and editing this yeah, down. Yeah. So this, I don't know if this is the final cut. It is the closest that at the moment we can probably get to it because it really does tell the story mm. and and it tells it in a very um, it's such a deep story too. It's a deep, so many it's, layered story. It's it's so hard to get it into final well, form because it, it's, it, really it's such a big. Well, I, I watched it in Shimla and I'll watch it again today and every time I'm watching it it, it brings a bit more to yeah something else mm. comes out it, it comes out of that but that actually there's, there's a story there because before you know you know what and it's not going well when you've watched it you go oh, I don't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's the silence I have made 50 films believe me and <laughs> the <laughs> silence of, of 49 of, this, of, this, of these oh I yeah. see 50 and versions and of yeah, this, yeah and that's what I mean yeah and it's just people watch it and it's me I'm listening to them as they watch it I'm not actually watching them I'm listening oh, to the responses yeah, yeah, yeah. on every level actually and constantly I was getting this mm. screaming it's not working it's not working how can we tell her it's not working you know and then finally after I again looked at it I had some more input from mm -hmm. Nina from Ronan from Lauren it was from those, my dad it was times we're sitting in front of the TV with all with notepads taking notes yeah. and trying to like and then what I did was out. I just literally flipped it all around. I flipped things that I thought they can't go there, it has to go there. And suddenly it just clicked. But it's, they say that in writing, it's mostly rewriting. You mean, you can write, but unless you rewrite 40 when times, you get you're not going to get feels so the good essay or the book or the novel or whatever. Um, and that was it, it was rewriting the editing of this film. And what, what's this cut length? Uh, one hour, three minutes. Now, there's title sequences there. There's a quite a long beginning title sequence, mm. which includes our sting for Caviro and the, you know, the, and then at the, the end is title. So you could say it's an hour for the actual story. So I suppose, is uh, I know this is kind of the final cut, but it'll be like 50 minutes with the broadcast. If, is well, that yeah, something you, you are yeah, going to aim for at some well, point? We'd, we'd, yeah, we'd love to. We're not gonna 50 really minutes. You could, yeah, we could, we could cut it down to broadcast at length. Yeah. Uh, you know, take off the, the, the sting and the, the, you know, I mean, a lot of the end titles are really just the thank yous to people that contributed to Carol's, uh, you know. Mm. Uh, oh no, we could, we could so cut you know, it, it down. Yes, it, it's, it's achievable. We could cut it down, I certainly would cut it down, I do want to sell it, I mean, that's a real yeah, aim yeah. that we've got. Um, uh, I could also probably cut out certain 
very small bits, not very much because I really have cut this. I mean, I've cut this film down from probably about two hours at one point yeah. and it's come down, down, down and I, I, it really is at a good length and it moves fast. It's got a, quite a flip it's got a good over pace. of, mm. yeah, yeah. I always think that it must be the most difficult thing when you see, I'm sort of touching on it earlier, <coughs> when you, you know, it's your baby, it's your, your vision, mm -hmm. but, you know, you've got to be brutal and excise it to a point yeah. where it's got to be interesting and not overly long and perhaps broadcastable, but that then means you've just got to keep cutting and cutting. And well, we, we had a the the situation and we went back and, you know, Laura did the voiceover and we thought, you know, it, it, was, it was a broadcast quality, but we then went into uh, post-production, went into the studio and we thought, well, yeah, if we've got this far, why not? Yeah, so we actually totally re-recorded re it and week. also cut out mm. quite a lot because again took a lot of you can have too much voiceover yeah. but one of the things actually it's really interesting this the material of this film risks being didactic or preachy because mm -hmm. it's about uh, another worldly almost it's it's not religious it's definitely spiritual and that's the last thing you want you don't want people to feel like they're being lectured at mm. you want them to be carried along on the wave of the idea of the film and that's what I hope we've managed to do with this because it's a gentle exploration of this journey and what it brought in the end for Carol and Chetta and Raju. No, I don't think you're alone. I mean, there's a film that we had in competition the last fest uh, festival before last and it was a four hour cut of a documentary. Four, four hour. Hours. And it was an amazing film. Thomas Chapman and Sonny's involved with this. And it's all about this guy, Thomas Chapman, who's this amazing jazz, uh, I think he was a trumpeter. Yeah, trumpeter. You know, kind of like a Miles Davis sort of guy. Yeah, but yeah. I'd never heard him, but listen to his incredible stuff because I like jazz anyway. Yeah. And then they cut down to two and a half hours, which, you know, it's already exercised an hour and a half from it. So I think they've now cut it down to an hour. Mm. So I've got only knows what they went for to get it to that. Yeah. But they're obviously mm -hmm. looking at broadcasting. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, you're not alone. It's, it it yeah. must be devilishly hard to do. Well, for the enthusiast, you know, somebody can buy the director's cut that's a four hour version. Yeah. <laughs> but most people want to sit and hang you know, I think the problem we've got nowadays is that everybody's so used to tweets, 150, mm. yeah. you know, what is it? Like I, I don't know, just ever, it's very it's it's tiny sentence, yeah. anyway, yeah. and it's in sound bites, and even politics, and the huge world it's scary how the president yeah. are brought down to like a momentary comment. Yeah, where it's like an update on your phone, like that BBC News, yeah. and you just flick it away, because it's, like, yeah. it's just instantaneous And now. people think, and, and the concentration has suffered because of it, they aren't able to concentrate and watch. Now, I'm not saying that our film would have been able to elicit that ability from people, it's not like, you know, a Chekhov play or something where something is developing, but at the same point, you want to give it enough time so that it's honouring the story, yeah. and not rushing it through. No, I'm the same. If, if I look at my favourite newspaper, the Daily Mail, I know that headline sort of... That's a joke, by the way. Yeah, we're all there. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, but it's say the BBC or the Guardian, whatever, and yeah. that headline is grabbing, because really that's um, yeah. the same thing, isn't it? Because it yeah. needs to grab me. And uh, unfortunately, you're right. I mean, you know, we live in a world where people aren't communi communicating face-to-face. -face. We're all guilty of it. I, you know, do it all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, we are, but the, the slowness that is coming through the food movements and music and art actually are they are at the vanguard of the fact that our whole society needs to slow down and we're all going to be moving in a certain direction very soon. Digital detoxes are a mm -hmm. huge thing now. Yeah, they are, yeah. Yeah. And this particular film, aside from cold, there's money there. Camera, I can see there's money there. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a digital detox. I think that's really what this film's what about, really. It's the well, space I said time that, you know, Chita, who's in the movie, has got two phones, one with <laughs> a smartphone and he WhatsApp, he, we're on WhatsApp all that he's asking me last night, how's it going, how's it, you know, so I've been sending him pictures of the, of the magazine, he goes, oh, make sure Andy brings some back for me, and he's, he knows that we're in Berlin. But yeah. the and irony is that the poorest people on the yeah. planet all have mobile phones. Have, yeah, the highest phone ownership per capita, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I well, mean, he's, he's a, a Dalit, and the yeah. Polka yeah. phones. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they've got no status. But they were telling me that, well, that it's, uh, it's, 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 it's the first three months are free. And I said, what do you do after that? They said, you, you, you hand them back. Find Wi Fi. I don't know. Yeah, I'm sure that. Because they're trying to, I mean, it, it's like any of these markets. It's it's, it's market share, well, isn't it? it you know, getting in. Do you want to sell it to the top 100? Do you want to sell it to the bottom, you know, the bottom mm. 2 million or 100 million? Yeah, 100 you know, million. It's, it's good to it. uh, and yet, you know, like we, all, we all do it, don't we? I mean, we're always on our phones. and Yeah. But it mm. is. You know, we're we're of an age. You know, that looking back, you remember what it was like. Yeah, yeah. Or I remember telex. you getting your first mobile. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, telex. Do yeah. not leave. Stop. <laughs> yeah. But I, I remember at university going to the, the phone box at yeah. the end of the road. Just just my parents. I don't think I've ever used a phone box. 
Well, well my I'm daughter's 15. You don't know what the beeps are. She doesn't know what it was like. Really? Well, you're probably the same for you. How yeah, old are you? Yeah, I'm um, 18. So you would really only know I remember mum getting her first mobile, and yeah. that's like, yeah, I was just what it was I on. didn't really want But well, you've grown up with just CD owners. You, I mean, you obviously know what albums are, but you've, I guess yeah, it's all been digital. It was, it was been digital. CDs, and then it all went online. And that's like, it is, I just listen. It's to all online. solid state, and it's all download now, isn't it? Yeah. You it's know. terrifying. It's but scary because I honestly wish I did have that personal connection with like things. Oh, no reading matter. the album cover. Yeah, and, like yeah. stuff my, my like car, that. One of my car, one of my cars hasn't even got a CD player. It's just digital one. It's either Bluetooth. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, actually, our cars do. Incredible. Yeah. But no, you've got do. to think about this, they right? Don't. You've got a situation Many where stuff. we download yeah. stuff, right? And we have a license agreement where we can listen to it just ourselves, right? Somebody somewhere owns all of this and they will always own it. And mm. none of us, despite paying for it, are going to own anything. So and where are our heads? Physical. Why are we letting this well, happen? Well, it's interesting because, I mean, just for example, Uber, the UK have decided that Uber drivers are entitled to holiday pay, etc. Yeah. Because what we're deciding, if you're going into technology, I mean, you know, we're all for technology, but if technology has been used to make, make downgrade us all to, mm. you know, and drive, drive, drive down conditions and prices. Well, it's kind of a race to the bottom. Almost. Well, that's I mean, it, yeah. yeah. But if, that's what, if, te- if, we, if that's what we're using technology for, Mm. There's going to be a backlash against it, so it's quite interesting that you know. I know in Berlin, for example, they, ta- you have to be a taxi driver to be an Uber driver. Right. So that, that's not a bad thing, though. It's not a bad thing. I, I agree with that. You know, we, we've got the convenience, but we also need to make sure that the people providing those services are actually being looked after. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's no. There's no. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. No, no. I think it's. Yeah, I think it's a great. So you know, really, this film, <coughs> in some extent, a wee bit like that because the Dalits aren't getting a fair. A fair go, if you know. Um, they never have. I mean, this is this is actually what an unusual film in the sense that if any films about Dalits at present will quite rightly show how badly treated they are. So they focus on the negative sides and the really punishing human condition that they're living mm. in. It's rare to find a film which is actually about the people who are Dalits who have got a chance to actually elevate themselves and move to another level within their society. Um, and I personally feel that we need to see more films which are positive and about positive change that people mm-hmm. can you know, write in their own lives than always looking at the negative, destructive, violent method that society is living in. Mm. That's a big thing for me because I think as we think, we create the world that we're in. I mean, I remember asking you actually in the interview about would you ever consider living there or, you know, and I, I, but I thought kind of what might be you, Colin said, well, maybe it was 20 years ago, 30 years ago. So it, might, I mean, I, I've been there a few times, and I mean, you, it, it, it's it's an incredibly beautiful place. Yeah. But it, it's now starting to basically because it's it's like you know, there's an incentive for people to build hotels, to build mm-hmm. houses, to you know, get mass tourism up there. Mm-hmm. And you go to these most beautiful I spots, and like it's that, just being it's full destroyed. of it's, it's full of rubbish. Yeah. You know? yeah. And that's just because there's so many people. So it must have been when Carol first went there. It must have been. It must have been amazing. Incredible. Must yeah. have been absolutely yeah. amazing. But you know, we, we, there's parts of uh, Cambodia and Thailand. I was Thailand. just thinking about yeah, Cambodia. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember they, they used the like they, they used banana baskets for a long time? So the banana leaves, when they were finished with the baskets or the bags, they went back to nature and they weren't didn't affect it. Now it's plastic bags. Wherever you go, plastic bags are ruining countryside. It's the same in India. It's the same everywhere. Now the West yeah. is responsible for these plastic bags being in the kind of natural spaces mm. we're talking about. So this is basically, in many ways, it's our fault. We can't blame mm. India because it began with our drive towards um, profit. Yeah, <coughs> like consumers are also being rolled in, isn't yeah. there? Yeah. No, I've never been to Asia. You know. Mm. Yeah, I thought I'd been to Dubai, which doesn't really count, but you know, so I haven't really got um, a, a sort of bellwether of what it's. I can only, I, obviously, I see on screen and all sorts of things, but I've never, I can't, I've never experienced it, so I don't know. I've been west mm. loads of times, mm-hmm. but I've never been mm-hmm. east. Mm-hmm. And I would like to, I'd love to do a, tri- a, a train trip, like a bucket list across. The, yeah. India, that would be really cool, I think. Yeah. And I know someone who's done it, and they said it's it was complicated. Amazing. Yeah. Indian Man trains. He said it was complicated. Train ticket. It's not the most straightforward process. Mm. And the cars are, it's just organised chaos. Mm. And it's automatically, I've now got the beep, 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 you know, because it is just, yeah. it's got constant. Starts, yeah. starts, starts constant. early, finishes late. Because it's mm. not, it's, it, we use the horn as a form of a, a warning. aggression, you yeah, know, yeah, as yeah. a, Whereas there, it's sort of like, I'm here, you're there, you know, it's all sort of, it's like juggling, you know, these mm-hmm. cars, and it, 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 it's, it gets through it, and it works, and... They seem to 
breathe in as they go through a couple really, yeah, of houses and like, breathe out like again. It's almost like the bus in Harry Potter. Yeah, it's, it's really yeah. <laughs> so, and what, what does Cal think of it? Cal loves she it. Absolutely she loves it. Oh, you know, we she sh- has had such an unusual life. She has been quite nomadic, amazing. and she's somebody who's... It's an amazing story, actually. It is. Incredible, yeah. But, I mean, she's travelled the world with this itinerant way of teaching, and she is half Indian. Her dad was uh, Indian, but I think he died a long time ago, and she grew up in England, north of n- the north of England, a family of four. Um, and her, her family are all very, you know, they're professionals and very well to do. She's the one who's sort of moved out and almost made herself an outcast from the society she's mm. in. Um, but she's a really inspirational figure. She's an artist and she's a teacher. And as you know from the film, she had dreamed of having a house. There was no possibility of her mm. having a house. None whatsoever. She has no money. He's mm. the slab of land. Yeah. And, s- and now she's got this... I don't want to spoil the plot. No, no, no. no, no. This amazing house. Yeah, it yeah. is, yeah. yeah. And I, I kind of see what you mean about the... I know sort of visual like the post has gone down now, but you know, almost like a paradise lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. sort of, yeah. Well, it is. It's, 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 it's a copy. Well, not a copy, but it's, it's inspired it's by amazing. Lost Horizon. Uh, sorry, uh, Lost Horizon. That's yeah. a paradise. Yeah. Yeah, Lost Horizon. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, Lost Horizon was a film that I saw when I was a. Uh, I was about thirty. I didn't even know. I'd, I'd seen the film years ago. Yeah. I didn't even know it was a Frank Capra film. Well, do you know, I, I didn't. didn't know I didn't see the Frank Capra version until recently. I saw the really odd nineteen seventies one. No, I've seen the Capra where, version. Yeah. Well, that's the nineteen seventies one. That's, that's one. Yeah. No, that's true. But the one in the nineteen seventies that I saw with my aunt and my sister that formed my opinions of of these possibilities, these um, mystical lands. Mm. I've always dreamt of these kind of things. Mm. So to find myself in a situation of travelling to India, meeting people who work on the same premise and then to make this film has been really quite remarkable. It's like everything I've thought of and hoped for has come out and unfolded in a certain way. So yeah, it's, exactly it's quite it's the same thing, interesting. You know. What would you like to do? Oh, I'd love to be able to travel and make films. Yes, Colin's always wanted and to do that. And now he's doing oh, it. Well, let's do it. Why not? Yeah, but it sounds sort of. If you, I can't remember. It was about three years ago you came back and said, "Oh, because yeah, Laura's been going to the same meditation mm. practice right, for a long, long time." time. So he said, yeah. "Oh, you know, Carol, she, she started to build this house," mm. and I was going, "This is crazy. There's no way." But well, in the Himalayas, yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah. So then Isn't Carol happened to be in Ireland. Yeah. So she came and stayed with us a couple of days and told us what was happening, showed us pictures, mm. and I said, "You know, Laura, this would make a great film." Yeah. And, and before you know it, that, that's, we just we organised there and then, okay, I'll come, I want you to fit me in. Yeah. When, when, you know, when can I come and see it? Yeah. Um, that's when we first went out and spent six, seven weeks. You were out there. I don't know how Colin managed it, actually, because I, I was out later on, not with Carol, doing some other work, and I had to go up into the foothills of the Himalayas, and the roads are like this, you know, the hairpin bends. Yeah. I couldn't even walk out the bus. I actually staggered out. I felt so sick. <laughs> what, so from the heart because looking over the edge? And no, 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 it's a movement. It was oh, like right, being okay. on but the worst that, no, right. sort I, of I landed ship. at the airport, and uh, Raju greeted me with the Tibetan, you know, the, the white scarf mm. and uh, we go out to the car and I, I, I go so, it's, so it, you know we're into the Ford Fusion you know it's a few years ago <laughs> at least third hand well it says and something that even Ford has stopped making it yeah, yeah and I said I said <laughs> the car, so to the car then, what car are we taking up to when we go on the trip up the mountains oh, Land Rover Defender you're in it, yeah. Yeah. Like, what Land is Cruiser yeah, yeah. It's a Defender. Yeah. he said no you're in it and there was four of us in that car for a long time on oh. the most terrible roads, and I'm in the back filming oh. with a camera. That, you know, I don't know. Well, you'll see the footage. Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah. bit shaky. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose it explains the myth about not a, well, I'm not ageist, but some people might be in terms of you know you can't. You're too old to do something. Absolutely. And yet she's well, now seventy-eight. Seventy-eight. Now. She's seventy-eight now. Yeah. 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 So we're trying to identify well, who's our target market. You know, because most people at Carol's ages are sitting in a home or in a, spend all day in a chair watching Carol's TV is or an anomaly. Yeah. Like she's. She may well be. She's incredible for her age and all, but she's not her age in she's any like, respect. She's, she's like a twelve-year-old. Yeah. Well, she's years. just learned how to text. <laughs> which is a real, which is really it. Because you know, before she used to, you know, she, she's got a mobile phone. But now she knows how to text, but she she hasn't worked out that auto correct, <laughs> which is really funny. <laughs> so because I can't imagine there being phone masks anyway up the Himalayas. I mean, <coughs> what's Wi-Fi. yeah, you Wi-Fi, don't get Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi and stuff. No, it is. It's quite interesting because you know the other thing it is. You, you, there's a lot of army checkpoints and you know they're controlling mm-hmm. what and who's moving places. So every time we're stopped. Uh, I'm sort of paranoid about because police and army know the first thing is they stop filming. Mm. Whereas here, the army guys are going, actually, no, if you come here, you get a better shot. <laughs> and, really? Uh, yeah, yeah, and the guy goes, have you got any satellite phones? 
and then he's looking at the camera smiling as he mm -hmm. works his pasture chest out. Mm -hmm. That was a bit that was lost in the edit. I know, we, we yeah. kept that in. But there were certain things that are so funny, but they just couldn't stay in because it was it too long. Yeah, I don't suppose it added to it. No, it didn't add to it. And actually, it just confuses things. You know, you, what I really needed was to show just how quick the progression was and how interesting it was. And when you bring in too many things to show the characterisation, you lose an awful lot of the story. Mm. It just becomes too, too fluffy. Mm. If you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. I mean, you know, all the filmmakers, again, it gets back to, back to editing, they all want to keep stuff in, but they just know it's, yeah. it just doesn't yeah. add to it. In fact, it takes stuff away, and mm -hmm. they've got to get it to a certain length, and the only way to do that is take out footage and really want to keep a note. It's yeah. just of no use, really. Yeah, you've got to be really in, well, it's an intellectual, <coughs> rational process as opposed to a heart process. Mm. So, I mean, what you want is a film that does hit the intellect and the heart at the same time. But what you need to do with the editing is, is to make reasoned decisions that mm. you know don't detract from the film and actually add to the film. Because often it's the silences and the spareness that adds to a film and yeah. gives it the gravitas it needs. That's it. Great. That is it. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you very much.